So many questions I must ask myself today. I wonder if Jesus thinks I've done my share. Will I wake in the morning to find regrets upon my mind? Or will I leave a trace of Jesus somewhere? So many questions I must ask myself today. Praise the Lord. Good morning. I'm Evangelist Doris Chapman of Doris Chapman Ministries. Thank you for tuning in today. Amen. I pray that God will say something today that would enrich you, enlighten you, amen, energize you, amen. We just thank you for tuning in every Sunday. Remember, Comcast Channel 20, amen, or you can tune in at bgntv.gospel, bgntvgospel.com, amen. You can pull it up on YouTube, amen, anytime that you get ready, glory to God. So we thank and we praise God for being here another uh, day. We thank and we praise God that his word is already blessed. Amen. And so I'm asking God to bless the hearers today. Glory to God. Amen. And that that you need to hear. Amen. I pray to God that God was speaking unto you today. Amen. The Bible said, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying unto him. So we give God the glory for that. Amen. Today is part two of prayer. Amen. We talked about prayer last week. Amen. And said so prayer is just simply talking to God. Isn't that something? Just simply talking to God. Amen. It said prayer. Amen. Is is um, James five sixteen. We started out. Said the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Amen. And so we talked about that being to be effective, you have to have success in producing a desire. Glory to God. Amen. Some people, know everything they do, they never finish it. They never see the results. But to be effectual, glory to God. Paul says you have to uh, be able to have success in producing a desire. What is it that you need from God? What is it that you need for yourself and for others? Amen. There's got to be some success. So if you keep praying and nothing is happening, and girl, I'm still broken. I didn't wait and wait. You know, I'm telling you, something is wrong, and it's not with God. It's with us. Amen. So James said, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, it availeth much. We talked about being fervent. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Fervent means the, the effectual fervent prayers or the effectual sincere prayers. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. You've got to be sincere when you go to God. Hallelujah. You've got to be sincere. Amen. You go to God and they're getting ready to evict you and you know that it wasn't your fault. Amen. You know this and you know that this was wrong. Amen. You get sincere. You go to God. Amen. You think God's going to walk away? Your, your natural mother and father wouldn't do it. God will not walk away from you. Amen. If you're sincere. And then if you have, a, are you the righteous man? It said, the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man. Glory to God. Amen. But don't get it twisted, people of God. You can't live any kind of way. You can't talk any kind of way. You can't go to the to the, to the the club and, and do all these things, you know. You can't walk around with all your cleavage out and wear all these stretch pants that shows your body and stuff, trying to entice people. And then you're going to go to God. Amen. You got it twisted. Glory to God. And so he's saying here, it's got to be a righteous man or a righteous woman. If you are righteous, your prayers would avail much. Come on down. Amen. I've never seen people that are always tell me, well, all I can do is pray. That's because you don't know the power of prayer. You don't know what prayer is just simply talking to God. All you can do is talk to God. He made you. He knows you. Ah, glory to God. Amen. He's the one that put a heart and all your organs in your body. And if he put them in your body, glory to God, you think he can't recreate? Nah. He said, I'm Alpha and I'm Omega. I'm the beginning and I'm the end. Amen? And I'm the middle. He said, is there anything too hard for me? And all you can do is, is, is pray. Come on now. Amen? But it says here that the earnest prayers of a righteous man has great power and great results. You see, so I'm telling you, you've been praying, you've been saying or whatever, but you don't see any results. I'm trying to tell you that something's wrong there. Glory to God. Amen? It says that the earnest prayer, are you being earnest when you pray? How did it, are you being sincere? Are you being intense? And are you being passionate? 
Ah, glory to God. Amen. He said it avails much. It avails much. It said it will cause great power and wonderful results. When you touch Jesus, he'll touch you back. Amen. And so this is what prayer is. When that woman that had the issue of blood for 12 long years, she went from doctor to doctor. She spent all of her money. And check this out. She got worse. But she heard about a man named Jesus. I'm talking about the real God now. Amen. I'm not talking about a Jesus. Come on now. I'm talking about the Jesus, the one that gave his life. He died on Calvary. Come on now. And on the third day, he rose. Hallelujah. He said, all power is in my hand. Then he turned around and said, Behold, I give you power in Luke 10, 19. I give you power to, to, over all the power of the devil. That's the one you pray into, that you have all the power over the devil. And nothing, absolutely nothing, shall be in no, in no wise hurt you. The devil cannot stop you. But he's saying here that when you go to God, amen, and you talk to God, amen, and you have all power over all the power of the devil, every witch, every warlock, every liar, you got the power over them. You can speak God's word, but don't get it twisted. If you're not righteous, if you're not in right standing with God, amen, James said, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. He said, you got to say something in Mark eleven twenty two 22, down to the 26th verse. He said, whosoever shall say, Amen. You got to say something. What are you going to say? Well, anyway, bless me. No, baby. You got to say what the word says. Now, don't get it twisted. God only answers his word. You get, get the word in you. Get the word in you. Get the word in you. And when you get enough word in you, the word will do the work. Come on now. You ain't got to beg God and plead with God. Please, Lord. You don't have to beg God. He said, I know the plans that I have for you in Jeremiah 29 and 11. Plans for good and not for evil. To give you that expected end. God is willing and he's able to answer your prayer. He said, all things are possible, but you got to believe. And then he says this, without God, in, in St. John 15, you can do nothing. See, we go and we say all these words. Honey, I tell you, when God get ready, he's going to move. No, baby, you're going to die. Glory to God with your bad self. You're going to die. You've got to get into the word and let the word get into you. Now, remember in Romans uh, 10, it said faith comes by hearing. you got to hear the word. Come on now. you got to open your mouth and you got to speak God's word. God, in Isaiah 53, you said that by your stripes and I'm healed. You got to keep on confessing it, confessing it. Remember, faith cometh, E-T-H, continually. By hearing and hearing and hearing. Amen. And when you get enough word in you, honey, the word will do the work. Before you know it, amen. Amen. You go and you say, God, you said it and I'm not backing off of it. When the doctor said I had cancer, glory to God. It didn't bother me. Amen. Because I heard something back in Sunday school and I stood on God's word. No chemotherapy, no radiation, just Jesus. Come on now. And I wasn't even living the life that I should have been living. But when, when you believe God, and a lot of folks have faith in God, and they're not even saved. Faith moves God. He's no respecter of person, but he is a respecter of faith. Glory to God. And so it says here that the earnest prayers of a righteous man has great power and wonderful results. Guaranteed. Come on now. Money back guarantee. Amen. You're going to get guaranteed results. But there are strings attached. Glory to God. Amen. And so it says here, prayer, again, is just simply talking to God. Amen. And then the most important lesson we can learn is to pray. Talk to God. Amen. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. But this is the will of God. You got to, Lord, I don't understand what I'm going through, but I'm going to give you thanks because if it's not right, you're going to turn it around in Romans 8 and you're going to make it work for my good. You got to believe that. Amen. We talked about prayer. Amen. Prayer doesn't die. Amen. Even after we're gone. Amen. Prayer lives on in the heart of God. Amen. Glory to God. He said, my word in Isaiah 55, it will not go out and return to me void, for it shall accomplish. So this is how important prayer is. So never ever say, all you can do is pray. But, but do say that you got to get in line with God's word. Amen. He said, you got to be a righteous man or in right standing with him. And when you're in right standing with him, his word abide in you in St. John 15 and 7. 
and you abide in him, then you can ask whatever you will. Whatever the word says. He's come on now. He said, no good thing will I withhold from them if you walk upright. Now you got to go before God, you know, well, Lord, if you want me to have this. No, he said, no good thing will I withhold from you if you only just walk upright before me. Now, God's not like man. He's not a man. Man lies, but God doesn't lie. And if God said it, give God his word. That God, you told me. You shouldn't have told me if you wasn't going to do it. We've got to believe God. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so prayer lives beyond all generations. I don't care. You pray now. Some of us is living on our great, great grandmama's prayers. We never met them, never knew anything about them. But they prayed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. So prayer is not short-lived. Amen. Prayer is building a relationship up with God. And then I want you to know this. Amen. Because again, we got it twisted. Amen. We pray in prayer. Well, Lord, and look upon us and, uh, and thank you, Lord. I'm not on my cooling board and all this kind of stuff. That don't move God. Hogwash. Glory to God. God only is listening for his word. You give him his word. Come on now. His word was made flesh. When you got the word and you and the word and you and the word and you, that word becomes alive. It comes energized. Glory to God. And then he said, wait a minute, y'all. Hold it. Heaven will stop. Glory to God. The angels will stop. I hear my word. Ah, glory to God. So what he does, he said, I answer my word. When he was on the Mount of Temptation, the devil came and said, If you bow down to me, all of this I'll give you. If you if you, you, you up here 40 days and I know you're hungry, why if you're supposed to be God, turn these stones into bread. But what did Jesus tell them? <clears throat> Get behind me, Satan. See, you got to say something to the people of God. And he said, you know, he said, let me tell you something. It is written. It is written. In other words, you got to give God his written word back. It is just words on a piece on a book. But until them words get off that book into your heart, and then when it gets into your heart, come on now. Out of the abundance of the, of the heart, the mouth speaks. When you get enough word in you, then you'll start speaking what God says. But we don't want to spend time in God's word. Amen. We spend time in books and, and coloring books and television and all of this. But what will give life to you, life to your children, life to every situation is his word. Come on now. Sometimes I put BibleIS.com and I turn it on and go to sleep all night long. Just let it feed my spirit. When you feed your spirit, man, amen. When you hear it again, amen, I put a handle on it. Isaiah 53 and 5. I put a handle on it, Philippians 4.19, but my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Come on now. And I decree and declare that all of my needs are met. See, that's praying when you're decreeing and declaring, but it's God's word. He only answers his word, people of God. You got angels on one side, but you got the devil on the other side. When you speak God's word, the angels, and you're righteous. Now, you're in right standing with God, so don't get it twisted. Uh-huh. Oh, that just slipped out. Yeah, right. But when you when you cry out to God, the angels of God will hear his word and go forth and do whatever needs to be done. But when you say what the devil says, amen, girl, I got arthritis. If you don't have it, the devil's on this side and he's going to go and say, go ahead, get them joints. I got a high blood pressure. You're claiming it out of your mouth. Death and life is in the power of your tongue. Come on now. Matthew 12 says, by your words are you justified. And by your words are you condemned. Many times the doctor, when people have cancer, they give them six months to live. They give them two years to live. Come on now. They give them a, a death sentence. Come on now. You pay the doctor and he give you a death sentence. You're going to die. You take the word of a doctor, honey, I tell you, uh, let me get my will because I, I tell you, you know, this cancer and nobody makes it out of this. Okay, you're telling God, your word don't mean anything to me. I'm going to take the devil's word. So the devil goes forth. What I found out, people of God, that many people do not die from cancer. They die from fear. Come on now. They die from starvation. But if you give God his word back, by your stripes, 
Isaiah 53 and, and, three and 5. Lord, I'm standing on your word. I'm not standing on the scripture. See, religious folks, folks that don't have a relationship with God, they take the literal scriptures and they just stand on them. But there's no faith. There's no love. There's no relationship with God. That's why you don't get what God is saying. You don't have to die, lady. You don't have to die. Amen. Jesus said in John 10, the thief come to steal. He comes to kill and he comes to destroy. He said, but I come glory to God. I come that you, lady, you, lady, glory to God. You shall not die. You shall live. He said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundant. Hallelujah. Yeah, they told you that what you had, that nobody makes it out of this. They told you what's going to happen. Don't you believe a liar. Amen. Believe God. Amen. Turn and something's wrong in your life. Go before God. For, repent. Acknowledge what's wrong in your life. Lord, I don't love you like you love me. I don't want to spend time with you. But God, help me. Help, help me. Bring me into your presence. Help me to love you. Help me to know you. Ah, glory to God. Get up from there, lady. Get up from there, lady. Don't you say what the doctors say. The Bible said, let the sick say that I'm healed. Hey, glory to God. The Bible said, let the sick say it. Don't you say what the devil said. I don't care how the pain is wrecking in your body. Agree with God. Agree with God. But you don't understand, sister, how bad I'm hurting. I've been there, done that. But I stood on the word. The devil said, why don't you just ask God to let you die? Oh, no. I stood on the word. Devil, your power is not greater than the power of my father. Greater is he, young lady. Greater is he that is within you than he that's in, the, in, in, in your body. That's in the world. That's trying to come up in your body. Don't you know you can arrest that devil? You have all the power over all the power of the enemy. Luke 10, 19. He said, Behold, I give you power. God's given you power. He said in Acts 1 and 8, after the Holy Ghost, huh, after, after you receive the Holy Ghost, then and only then would you receive power. You have power. The anointing that backs your life, that when you speak, God said, I, I heard you. And he backs you up. As Elijah, what happened? When Elijah said, there'll be no rain for three and a half years. There was no rain. Until Elijah come back and said, there will be rain. Come on now. Amen? Ask him what happened when Naaman had leprosy. And God sent a word through the man of God to, to his servant to tell Naaman what to do. And Naaman went and done it. Amen? Now I'm talking about answer prayer now. You see what I'm saying? The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man or a righteous woman, it availeth much. Amen? When the man of God told Naaman go and dip seven times and told him where to go dip at, come on now. Glory to God. And guess what? Name and obey. He was mad. You know, I mean, how come I couldn't go to the suburb? Why I got to go in that nasty water? But yet and still, then why couldn't the man of God come on and talk to me? I don't need this, 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 nobody coming and tell me what he said. But God said, go tell him to tell him. Come on. And then he received. And he went and dipped. And guess what? He come up clean. Answered prayer. Answered prayer. What are you saying to God that you're getting the answers from? Glory to God. Amen. Then he said he only answers his word. He's, we pray his word and the angels are waiting. Hallelujah. The angels are waiting to move upon his word. Coming from our heart. But it can't be coming from your lips. Come on now. He said you're with your lips you're praising me. You're worshiping me. But your heart is far from me. See you're in fool so folk so long. Amen. Going to church, dressing up, and hallelujah, and all this kind of stuff. And you know your heart is not right. Come on down. That's why the, the James is saying, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Come on now. And the Bible tells us, if you're double-minded, one minute you're living for God, the next minute you're living for the devil. Come on now. Amen. He said, a double-minded man, don't you get it twisted. You're not going to receive anything from God. Now, you're going to receive something, but it won't be from God. With your bad self. Amen. Amen. Enough is enough. And I believe God is saying, and what's getting ready to come up on this, this earth, you better make sure, you better make sure, sure, sure that you are your anchor holds, that you are in the word and the word is in you and you're dwelling in the secret place of the most high. Well, you're not going to make it, young lady. You're not going to make it, young man. You're gonna, not going to make it, pastor. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. So what is God saying? The prayer moves. When we pray, it moves the angels of the Lord. They come to minister, whatever it is. God, in the name of you, Jesus, you know, I call upon you. Glory to God. Amen. You, when my child is going through something, but you said the seed of the righteous is blessed. If God said the seed of the righteous is blessed, then baby, your seed is blessed. Amen. When your child is going through and if the devil said they're going to die and this is going on, that's going on, stand on God's word. But just you got to make sure while you can now build the relationship with God that when you speak, God hears you. Amen. And then you can look down at your child and see the death trying to come. And then you give God his word. The seed of the righteous you said is blessed. So that means your seed, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, come on now. Every generation, they're going to be blessed. Ah, glory to God. I know I'm right about it. Hallelujah. Amen. And so he says here that when we pray, the angels move. Amen. And when you pray the uh, scriptures, when you pray what you feel, then the devil moves. Amen. I tell you, I can't take no more. The devil's on this side. Did y'all hear that? It's working. Keep going. Keep putting more pressure on them. Amen. Keep doing this. Keep doing that. You got to say what God say. Glory to God. You and God are the majority. God said in, in Romans 8, if I be for you. Huh? Glory to God. I'm more, hallelujah, than the world against you. If God is for you, and God is for you, but only if you're righteous. Only if you're righteous. I don't know who's not telling you the truth, but you know better. You know better. Amen. You're going to go to God. You know, it's, you better thank God for his grace and his mercy. Because if you go before a natural judge with your nasty self, come on now. You go before the judge, amen, saying this and saying that. You know, he called your name. Yo, brother, what you want? He'll check you in a minute. And the beta will have you put in jail for contempt. Amen? But yet we're going to go before God and know we're not right. No, we haven't spent any time in the Word. All we do is go to church and hear a good sermon, amen, and then go home and still do what you do. Come on now. you got to build a relationship with him. Amen. Amen. Prayer is fellowshipping with the Father. A vital personal contact with God. Amen. You can tell who's, who's praying. You can tell who's with God and God is with them. Amen. When you walk in a person's presence, you can feel the presence of God. Amen. Sometimes you hug a person and whatever you were going through, the headache or whatever, all of a sudden it's gone. Come on now. That's what prayer would do. Communicating with God on a continual basis. Glory to God. It's going to cost you something. Amen. Pentecost costs plenty. Ah, glory to God. Amen. And then I heard a uh, uh, sister was saying to me, she said, when you pray, you are talking to God. When you pray, you are talking to God. Amen. Hallelujah. But when you read his word, when you read his word, God is talking to you. But are you listening? He that have ears to hear, you got to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Then once you hear it, then you got to begin to hear it again and hear it again until your faith level gets up, until you can believe it. You got to keep hearing it until you believe it. Amen. You don't have to go back praying the same thing. Go get some faith. Go back and get faith. Get into that word. Write it on an on a index card. Amen. I mean, put it on a board. Whatever you have to do. Write it down like we did in school. Amen. You do something wrong, they tell you, they said you got to write this 25 times. Write it down. Write it down. Put a handle on it. And then when you get done, where the scripture is found, program your spirit. God, I'm standing on your word. I'm standing on your word. I'm standing on your word. Amen. Amen. When I was an epileptic and I was, I was having seizures, grandma seizures, and my mother and the pastor was at my head. When I come to, amen, they were saying that she'll never be able to sing. She'll never be able to talk. But I believe God, people. God, I believe God. And here I am today. Glory to God. Seizure free. Grandma seizures, taking phenobarbital and dilantin, supposedly for the rest of my life. But prayer works. Come on now. When you talk to God. But if you're not talking to God, you're telling God, I got this. I can handle my own business. And that's why you're where you're at right now. Come on now. Amen. Shame on us. Amen. We go to church. We go to church. We go to church. But I come by to tell you, you are the church. <laughs> Glory to God. You're wasting time. Amen. Back in the day, he said you can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool mom. You cannot fool God. So the Bible is saying to us, hallelujah.
prayer is fellowshipping with the Father. Amen. Prayer is, is when you pray a heartfelt prayer. Hallelujah. It causes power. It causes God to illuminate himself. It causes God to come forth and to show himself strong. It causes God to say, I'm just not just a person that, that you can look around and say, well, maybe where is he at? He said, I will manifest myself. I will reveal my word to you. But you've got to build up your relationship with him. Amen? You've got to take time out with him. Hallelujah. Read good books. Read the word. Write the word down. Then lay down and meditate. I have a granddaughter. And she said that you close your eyes until you can see it. The Bible said without a vision, you're going to perish. Amen. You got to see yourself healed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. You got to see yourself. Amen. That when you go to court, young man. Amen. You got to see yourself coming out. You got to see God vindicating you. Amen. And once you close your eyes and see it, then my granddaughter said, then be it. Amen. And then be it. You got to be what the word said that you are. You are more than a conqueror. Amen? You are more than a conqueror. The greater one lives in you. Ah, glory to God. All God is saying is come. Come a little closer. Come and stay a little longer. Come and go a little deeper. Hallelujah. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then he said, come and hear what I'm saying. Amen? Sit at my feet and just wait before me. I'll build you up. I'll strengthen you. I'll energize you. Don't you know that God's word is spirit and it gives life? When you get into the word, let the word get into you. I don't care how down you are. I don't care what's going on in your life. He will energize you like the energizing bunny. He'll take out those old batteries and he'll put some new batteries in you. Them die hard. They'll never die. Come on. So it's all on you, people of God. And think about it. You got it twisted. Hey, glory to God. You're, God. you're on the phone, but if you look in, and it says that you're not authorized to make this phone call. Huh? Amen? Amen. The only thing you can do on any phone, they tell me, is call 911. <laughs> yeah. I don't care how much you pay for the phone. Amen? All you can call is 911. Amen? God's going to always make a way that you can call on him. And if you acknowledge your sin, and you call on the Lord. He's faithful and he's just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Amen. God said you have a form of godliness, but you are denying the power of God to deliver you. And if God can't deliver you, how are you going to go out there and try to deliver somebody else? You got it twisted. You got it twisted. Hallelujah. So we thank and we praise God. Amen. That as God's word is going for part two. Amen. We're coming back with part three. Amen. Hallelujah. Like I say, if the shoe fit, wear it. And if it doesn't fit, amen, I'm going to try to put it on anyway. Because I want to be right before God. If I've got to be righteous, Lord, make me righteous. I thank and I praise God, amen, for your time. I thank and I praise God for the truth. Amen. I thank and I praise God that the word has fallen on good ground. Now, remember, you can pull up Doris Chapman Ministry on YouTube. You can go to BGN TV gospel.com amen and on comcast channel 20 every sunday morning glory to god amen amen and listen over and over and over until that word gets into you you don't wait for somebody to feed you just once on sunday you eat every day three times and four times and five times a day feed yourself the word of god amen get to know him spend time with him and then give him his word back i thank you and i praise god for you until this time, next next uh, Sunday morning, amen, God bless you and God keep you. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name. So many questions I must ask myself today. I wonder if Jesus thinks I've done my share. Will I wake in the morning to find regrets upon my mind? Or will I leave a trace of Jesus somewhere? So many questions I must ask myself today. My name is Mike Duggan, and I'm watching the Bell Global Network. Hey, keep it locked. It's your boy, D. Hattie, watching the Bell Global Network. You know how it is. 
Hi, I'm Charlie Langton, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, this is Martha Reeves, and you're watching Bell Global Network.